Good afternoon, baseball fans, and welcome to Stevenson Field at Stadium 11 for another edition of the Penn Street Rivalry. Playing a little baseball today, casting hair, Chaw. I'm Cooper Cloud, joined today by Mark Adams. Uh, no Brett Boger on the call today, but have a quality replacement, Mark. Thanks for joining us, Mark. We, uh, we've we got a, a matchup today of the number four Herenshaw Chargers. Re rankings were recently released today uh, after a fantastic stretch of games for the Chargers. Last time we saw the Chargers on Charger Vision, they lost to the Mount St. Mary's Rockets, but since then they've won 10 straight and are now ranked number four in 3A with a record of 23-3. and three. This is Coach Breck Draper's second season at the helm with a record of 51-11. and 11. That's good for an 823 win percentage. Today we're playing the Cassie Cyclones, who have a record of 6-8, and 2-5 and five in the SBC Conference. Their head coach is Steve Shelley, who's also their athletic director. It's his 12th season, and he has a record of 102-105. and 105. Uh, The feature player today for the Chargers is catcher junior Brennan Ezell. He's number 25. Coach Draper calls him the QB of the defense and uh, considers him one of the best catchers in the state. He's a fantastic power hitter and a uh, little different for a high school catcher as a great base runner. Usually catchers are, are pinch ran for, but Brennan handles his own duties and leads the team with 16 stolen bases. He's, he's hitting 526 on the season with two home runs and 31 RBIs. On the opposite side for the visiting Cyclones, feature player is Colin Morris. Colin Morris is a senior center fielder and right-handed pitcher who will be taking his talents to uh, the Colorado School of Mines next fall to play baseball and football. He's got great speed, a good stick, and uh, he's a pretty good defender with a great arm, and he's uh, a decent close on the mound, so if it's a close game today, we might see him on the bump. Uh, when we take a, We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we get back, we're going to get to the t keys of the game for both the Cyclones and the Chargers, and maybe hear a little something from Mark Adams. When you walk into Fuzzy's Taco Shop, you'll know you're in the right place. With the best Baja-style menu in town, we'll have the whole family addicted. Order up. Nachos, tacos, burritos, it doesn't matter. It's like an explosion of flavor in your mouth. We know you've had a long day, and you deserve a break. So, bring the crew to one of the Fuzzy's Taco Shop locations in Norman, Oklahoma City, or Stillwater. Welcome to your new addiction. Eat. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're going to get to our keys of the game. Mark, pipe in whenever you want. For the Chargers, uh, they want to attack and put pressure on, on the Cassidy catcher. They feel like they can put pressure on the base pass and, and move from first to second to third pretty quickly without having to hit to those positions. Uh, they want to keep playing flawless defense. Last week when we played Edmund Santa Fe of 6A, they committed zero errors and had very timely double play balls. Uh, they want to keep their foot on the gas. They don't want to let up, and they want to – they wanted to beat the Cyclones by a run roll, hopefully. And uh, they can't let them hang around because in, in any rivalry game, as you know, uh, the lesser team can stay in the game because of uh, momentum and adrenaline. You've seen every game. Do those seem pretty pretty I, accurate? I think you're right on there. You know, it seems like we just got off the field from last night. We were in Bethel last night. Had a great win. Blake Adams on the mound got his first victory. <laughs> but other than that, shameless no. pl plug by the proud father. <laughs> Absolutely. No, this is a really fun team to watch. They've got a lot of confidence. Uh, the chemistry is just very good. It's kind of reminds me of the football season, and they're having a lot of fun. They've got great pitching, good defense, and, and a real good hitting ball club. So they got a chance to go really deep in the playoffs, and not a better way to get going in a, in a rivalry game. That's right. And we'll quickly go to the Casty keys of the game before. Uh, Coach Draper meets Coach Shelley at the at the plate, and then we get to the uh, national anthem. Uh, for the Cassie Cyclones, as Steve Shelley told us earlier, they want to throw strikes. They feel like if they can throw strikes, then they'll try to stay in the game because giving the Chargers any freebies is trouble for them as as uh, the Chargers are very potent on the on the base pass. 
Uh, next, they, they don't want any errors. They want to throw it and catch it. No snowball fights for the Cyclones, as they hope. Uh, they want to scratch a few runs early to put pressure on the Chargers and hopefully stay uh, with them throughout the game so, they're, so they can get it to late innings and get it to their horse, Colin Morris. Now we're seeing uh, Coach Casey Brown clean up the plate a little bit as the umpires and head coaches meet. Chargers are going to wear their classic home whites with white hats, OSU-style jerseys. Some Chargers will be wearing blue stirrups with gold and white stripes. And the Cassie Cyclones will be wearing, looks like they're blue jerseys with white trim and white pinstripe pants with blue stripes. As we saw last time on Charger Vision, that's what the opposing team did, wore white pants. I'm not a huge fan of that. I think they should show some respect and wear some gray. But, hey, it's a rivalry game. We like to mix up a little feathers. Absolutely. It looks like the wind's blowing out tonight, so we might have a couple pretty, yabos. Yeah, pretty good offensive showing for the Chargers tonight. Let's hope so. Last night, the Chargers had quite a few bombs. Caleb Gefeller had one. And I'll tell Roman you what. Roman had a grand slam and three-run bomb. Yes, I was at that game last night, and I'm telling you, Caleb's ball was barely probably a foot above the fence from the time it left the bat, and it got to that outfield fence and nothing flat. But it was a shot. Roman hit a grand slam and a three-run homer and just had a great night at the, at the bat and uh, fielded really good, so he had a great night. It was a good night for the Chargers. We're going to get underway here pretty shortly. Today, the Chargers are going to be joined by the third grade lower school Chargers, who a uh, pretty cool little deal here. They're going to, as the team of the year, I think. And they also have similar jerseys to the Chargers. Um, they're going to join them out for the first pitch and for the national anthem. And uh, we'll be getting to that shortly. You know, Breck's done a great job of incorporating the school from the freebies that the students get to the younger kids. And it's you know, all about Charger pride. And he's just doing a great job. This Friday, we'll be having a pretty cool deal. Speaking of that, Mark, um, Brett's, Breck is going to have uh, – he has organized his first alumni game. So all former Charger alumni that uh, played baseball at any point in their career at Heritage Hall are encouraged to come back on Friday and Saturday morning. Friday night's going to be senior night, which I believe will be heard on Charger Vision. And uh, Saturday morning, we'll get it more into it as the Chargers are now taking the field with the third-grade Chargers for the National Anthem. So we're going to pause – as the song is being played. Now we're going to get to the defensive assignments for the Chargers. On the mound today is 6'1", uh, 250-pound senior Caleb Gefeller, who's back after a year hiatus from playing baseball. He's going to get the start today on the mound. Uh, as Coach Adams said just a second ago, he had a big home run last night. Behind the plate, our feature player of the game, number 25, Brittany Zell. Playing first base, very talented first baseman and big leader for the Chargers, who's had a bit of a knee issue this year, but it's uh, not – Keppen from playing the field, number nine, Joe Wheeler. Playing second base today, 
been there every day this year. Jack Blumenthal, number four, the senior. At shortstop, the big RBI man from last night, number two, Roman Fansocker. At third base, power hitter, cleanup hitter, number 17, Alex Fisher. In left field, Mr. Everything, Campbell Kerr. In center field, Joe Buckendorf, the talented transfer in his first year at Heritage Hall. And in right field, Dawson Evans, uh, DH in today, Blake Adams, correct? I For believe Joe. that's so. If Joe's not hitting today, it'll be Blake Adams. Um, and then for the Cyclones, their batting order, uh, their feature player of the, of the game, number 13, Colin Morris, center fielder, uh, batting second, number two, senior catcher, Marshall Lucas, uh, batting third, number 24, the DH, Garrett Horton. He's DHing for the junior shortstop, Rob Nafa. Uh, batting fourth, number 16, Avery Weeks, sophomore first baseman. Uh, batting fifth, uh, number 12, Andrew Johnson, senior right fielder. Next, uh, 18, Donald Albers, the senior, the senior pitcher. And uh, batting seventh, number eight, Riley Staten, sophomore second baseman. Batting eighth, Dylan Rhodes, sophomore third baseman. And hitting ninth and playing left, number seven, Gray Cadigan, a junior. So a bunch of seniors and sophomores in the lineup for the uh, Cyclones. And uh, quite a few seniors in the lineup today for the Chargers as the uh, infield greets the senior pitcher at the mound and we'll get ready to get going. Bet the seniors are pretty excited. It's their last shot at, at Cassidy and they've had a pretty good run, I think four years in a row. So they're looking to continue that streak. So let's, let's play ball, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff's at home. Caleb's gonna start out in the windup today. First pitch is across a little outside. Colin Morse has a uh, mask on his face as he hits left-handed to protect him from pitches. He's not wearing any gloves today. 1-0 pitch is outside as well. Colin played football, had, had great speed, always had to worry about him, so you gotta always be aware of the bun here. Scoreboard says 1-1. One, one. We have 2-0, though. That's the first strike of the day. 2-1. Swing and a miss. Takes a count, 2-2. Two, two. Caleb's pumping the cheese early. He shakes off and then agrees with Brennan Azell. Pretty good pitch there. Not good enough, I guess, for our home plate umpire. Coach Jordan Seymour calls the pitches for the Chargers. Relays them to catcher Brennan Azell. Chargers are also coached by Casey Brown and John Dobbs. Swing and a miss, takes some pine meat. First out of the day, strikeout. Good sign there for Caleb to get on top of what seems to be the Cyclones' best player. He didn't get discouraged after two early balls. Now hitting number two, the senior catcher, Marshall Lucas. That says it hit, umpire says it hit the batter on the inside arm. I couldn't hear anything from this angle. And now running for the Cyclones, number 22, the catcher from the JV game, William Walter. A courtesy run for the catcher, so the catcher is able to re-enter. Now hitting the senior DH, Garrett Horton. William Walter takes a lead at first base as if he's second base, goes deep, and walks back up. Swing and a miss on a low off-speed pitch. 0-1 count. First time Caleb's been ahead on the hitter. High chopper foul. Takes the count to 0-2. You know, I think this is the second time Caleb's been on the mound since he took a shot in the wrist at the Sulphur Tournament. Took a little time off and starting to get back in the groove, but he's been a mainstay for the Chargers in the bullpen or even starting. That'll be big going into playoffs, having more arms than just the, the big three in Roman, Alex, and Joe. 
as the waste away pitch, trying to see if the Cyclones will go guessing there. Takes the count, one, two. Charger defense playing straight up right now. Center fielder Joe Buckendorf and Dawson Evans are playing in a little bit. It's kind of interesting with the win today. They're not very deep, that's for sure, but they've got great speed in the outfield, great speed. This is the first batter Caleb's been ahead on, and now he's falling back to 2-2. Hot shot foul down the third baseline. Pretty good crowd here today, Coop. Say the same thing. Good pickoff move. Keep the courtesy run on his toes. Another one. Make him tired before he potentially takes second. Pretty good lead over there at first. Pretty good count to run on, isn't it? Should have. Take some pine meat, second strikeout of the day. <laughs> now sophomore first baseman, Avery Weeks, the first sophomore after a senior related first three batters. Like we said, Chargers are number four in the 3A standings. Moved up from number five from last week after the big win against Santa Fe as Brendan Zell picks back to first. Pretty good idea after a high ball. Vertigris is number one in the standings with a 22-1 record, and Vianne and Beggs are head of Chargers. Foul ball towards the middle school, takes a count one and one. He's throwing strikes, that's what the coaches are looking for. Low ball and a check swing as the Chargers asked for the check. Field umpire says he did not go, so the count will go two and one. G disagrees and then agrees. Pumps a one right down the pipe there. Takes a count two, two, two. So get your twos going at home. Runner goes, Brennan kind of bobbles it. And Roman can't hold on. I don't know if even Roman would have caught it if he would have had a chance. Pretty good jump there. Pretty good pitch to run on, caught him throwing a curveball. G's first payoff, second payoff pitch after falling behind the first batter. Shot to center field as Joe Buckendorf drifts back. He's going to get over his head and fall down for a, looks to be an RBI double as he hustles to go get the ball and get it in for Roman fan soccer. Conversation now from pitching coach Jordan Seymour will take place at the mound. Pretty good rip there from the sophomore. Coach Seymour doesn't look too happy about that location, that pitch. Second baseman Jack Blumenthal joined the conversation. Second left-handed batter for the Cyclones is Avery Weeks, the first baseman. Steps up to the plate. Actually, I think this is Andrew Johnson. Kind of Andrew rim. fouls ball over the touch of sand. Go ahead, Mark. Kind of reminiscence of last night. Gave up a run in the first. And 
and got the ball rolling. O2 count now for Johnson. Take some pine meat, three strikeouts for Caleb to end the first inning after giving up one run and one hit after he hit a batter. We'd like to thank 77 Energy for supporting the Charger Vision program. You can visit them on the web at 77NRG.com to learn more about their oil field services. Also like to give a huge thank you to Fields and Futures for supporting Charger Vision. Check them out online at fieldsandfutures.com to find out how they're empowering coaches and kids to be something bigger than themselves. Fields and Futures, igniting success, one field, one coach, and one student at a time. Also like to give a congratulations to state champion basketball player Chris Hamilton, coach Chris Hamilton, his dad on being named the first team Little All City. All right, now we'll get to the defensive assignments of the Cyclones. Pitching today is going to be Donald Albers. Uh, behind the plate, Marshall Lucas, a senior. In center field, Colin Morris. Left field, Gray Cadigan. And right field, Andrew Johnson, who had the strikeout to end the bottom of, top of the first. Uh, playing first base. Avery Weeks, who had the double to send in uh, the pinch runner, William Walter. Playing second base, Riley Staten. Shortstop today is Rob Nath. I haven't seen him yet because he got DH4 in the first. And playing third is going to be sophomore number nine, Dylan Rhodes. Now the lineup for your Chargers, which has become kind of consistent since the first couple of games. Leading off is going to be Campbell Kerr, who's the all-everything, plays every position. Batting two today, number four, Jack Blumenthal. Hitting third, Alex Fisher, and batting cleanup, the catcher, Brandon Zell. Playing center field and batting fifth, Joe Buckendorf. Hitting sixth, the right fielder, number five, Dawson Evans. Hitting seventh, shortstop, Roman Fansocker. Batting seventh and had seven RBIs last night, so don't count out the bottom lineup for the Chargers. Batting eighth, the pitcher, Caleb Gefeller, and DHing Blake Adams, the freshman, DHing for Joe Wheeler as he's going through a little knee issue. You know, like, go, go ahead. Sorry about that. Uh, I mean, to jump on you there, top of the lineup's been pretty hot lately. Kerr and Blumenthal have been setting the table, getting on base. These other guys have been bringing them in, so hopefully they can keep that keep that going for us tonight. Campbell's hitting 366 on the season with 11 walks, which is crucial for the top of the lineup. He's been hit by a pitch twice and, ha and has 31 runs, which leads the team. Look for him to get on base, take his pitches, not swing anything that he doesn't want. He's going to get his pitch and only his pitch. Ball in the dirt. First offering from Donald Albers. Kind of a different motion, isn't it? I haven't seen quite that motion before. Pretty quick, throws it from his ear. Slow chopper to the third baseman. Pretty good stretch and throw. This Campbell's gunned out for the first out of the inning. Now hitting the second baseman, Jack Blumenthal, who's hitting 338 after early slump in the season. really gotten on track now. He's got 15 walks and 28 runs scored, which is second on the team. So scoring a lot of runs at the top of the lineup. also leads the team with three triples. He's ripping two down the first baseline, fouled just outside of the bag. Looks like the Chargers are going to try to get on Albers early. You know, Jack's been hitting everything to the right side of the field, so that was kind of a different poke for him right there, but he'll get her going. He's swinging early and often. Fouls the second one off towards the lower school. Athletic director Rod Warner shows up to the game. Good to see him. Give a shout out to him. <laughs> Rocking the fresh new white hat. The Chargers are debuting this year. Another rope down the third baseline, but that one's also foul. Count stays 0-2. Oh 
Chargers are going to have to get their timing down. They've been facing some pretty good pitching lately. They can throw some gas, and this is a little slower than they're used to. So we'll just have to make some adjustments, get it going. First off-speed offering. That's roped up the middle through the pitcher for Jack Blumenthal for the first hit of the day for the Chargers. So now a table set for the meat of the lineup for the Chargers as Alex Fisher comes to the plate. Fish is hitting 585 on the season. With two home runs and 37 RBIs, which leads from the Chargers. Fish has an been hit an astounding 10 times this year. As the, he doesn't see a first offering with a pickoff attempt. Jack Lumenthal is going to second, and the throw is way offline as he takes it easily. So now Ducks are upon for the Chargers after the high first pitch comes in for a ball. Well, that's one thing about the 23-3 and three Chargers. They're an aggressive baseball team. They're going to steal bases. They're going to bunt. They're going to move them over, and they're going to swing the bat. Fish is slugging 841. And he hits one pretty deep. On a two hop to the fence, Blumenthal's going to score easily as there's trouble gathering the ball in left field, and Fisher stands up easily for a one out double. I thought they had a chance to get out. Left field's pretty deep here at Stadium 11. So Chargers are aggressive early. And now the cleanup hitter, Brandy Zell, comes to the plate. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's probably his 10th hit of his last, last 11 at bats. He's really seeing the ball. Brennan's not too far off on the high average with the team. He's hitting 526. He also has two home runs, and he's hit 31 batters in. He fouls one back on the screen. Coach Draper spent a lot of time on the field today as we have a new design in the infield and a painted H behind the plate. I'd have to say this is probably the best field in the state because Coach Draper spends a lot of time and puts a lot of effort with the maintenance crew in on it. Called strike from the outside corner. Brennan wasn't too happy about it, but a fairly consistent zone so far. O2 count. He battles and fouls another one off towards the screen. Joe Buckendorf is getting some work in, running back and forth. Cyclones look like they're playing him straight away. He's pretty, pretty much of a pull hitter. Doesn't look like they've done their homework. Ball outside. One, two count. Fouls another one off. That's headed for a car for sure. It's amazing how many foul balls that miss these cars out here. They're just asking for trouble. One, two count stills. Brennan's fouled off three pitches in this at bat. Fisher has a conservative lead, second base. Another rope up the middle. Look like he hit that off the end of the bat. Coach Draper's going to hold Fisher at third as the ball is starting to get away from the catcher. No one's covering home. Brennan held to a single, even though Coach Draper would have liked him to head to second after the bobble at the plate. Now batting is the Dale transfer, Joe Buckendorf. Joe's hitting 382 on the season with 27 RBIs for this. Leading RBI guys are hitting 3-4-5 for the Chargers, which is good now. The Chargers have two runners on base. So our leading stealer on the team is at first base, and he's going to take, take off. No play on for the Cyclones. Brennan will slide in, 
this, with a throw being offline. Aggressive baseball by the Chargers. Base hit will score two here. Ball low. One and one. Now Charger fans get your ones ready as the count is one, one, one. Wind has kind of died down since the opening inning. But the defense still plays straight up. Off-speed pitch that Buckendorf offered at. One, two count. The multi-sport star Dawson Evans on deck. Another line drive up the middle as it bounces with center fielder Colin Morris. Alex Fisher jogs in. And there'll be bases on, base runners on the corner again for the Chargers. So there'll be another RBI for Buckendorf. Take the score to two to one. As Mark alluded to, Dawson Evans now at the plate. Dawson just got back su late Sunday night from a football combine in St. Louis. Sophomore free safety. Pinch, courtesy running for Bernie Zell is Preston Taylor, the freshman, who pitched pretty well in the JV game, which preceded the varsity game. Speaking of Dawson, they played a doubleheader on Saturday. Kingfisher and Bethany took both of them, of course, and then took off in the car and drove all night and got to St. Louis about 2 o'clock and had his combine on Sunday. Delayed, delayed steal. Delayed steal. And the Cyclones decide to throw down to third with no success. So now Dawson will have runners on second and third. Dawson's going with no gloves now as he patted his helmet to get some pine tar. One out still. Dawson hits it through the hole between third and second, third and short. Which will play another run, and the Chargers again will have runners on the corner. So the Chargers are staying aggressive, and it's working out to their advantage. Pitch runner Preston Taylor walks by with a smile after scoring. Now hitting the seven RBI man, Owen Fansocker. He joined the Sports Animal on Monday for a high school spotlight, and on Monday, he had himself quite a day. Before yesterday's game, he had 17 RBIs after. He got up all the way to 24, which put him fourth on the team in RBIs. Another delayed steal. Two more ducks on the pond here, Coop. All outside. Hey, Osby pitch for a strike. Fifty five men hour curve. Is that two, on the two high count. side? One two count. I thought that was a pretty good call. I think with the fastballs the Chargers have been hitting, I don't think Roman's going to be offering, now, offering up at an off-speed pitch. Ground ball scores second baseman. will score a run. So the Cyclones get their second out of the inning, but the Chargers score their fourth. Roman didn't look too happy about that, but he did his job. Hit the ball the right side of the field, score a run. Pitcher Caleb Cafello now to the player for the Chargers. 
Caleb's seen spot duty at DH and pitcher this year. He's hitting 308. Dawson Evans going to take home plate easy on a wild pitch. Catcher couldn't fight it behind the plate. So now Chargers are leading 5-1. This is the first time they haven't had a runner on base since the second batter of the inning. Albers will go back to the windup with no runners on base now. Caleb a pretty stand-up stance. He takes a pretty good cut right there. 1-1 one, one count. Charger it all a little bit early on that first swing. They get their timing down, it looks like. Ball low in the dirt. 2-1 count. 7 o'clock, Coop. I bet soccer's kicking off now. Carl Albert. Let's wish the soccer team good luck tonight. Chopper ground ball between third and short. Shortstop's deep in the hole. He's going to have to make a pretty good throw here. He does make a good throw, but the hop sold it down. Caleb beats it there and gets there on time. As now we'll have Chuck Shepard, <coughs> the freshman. Curtis running for the pitcher. So then he continues. And now we're at the nine hole hitter, Blake Adams. Blake's hitting 264 in the season. He's hitting the ball pretty hard, but not really finding the spots. He's hitting it right at people as, as of late. He started out hot. He has scored 24 runs though, which is third on the fourth on the team. Foul ball as Chuck was heading towards second. Deep in left field corner. Another multi-sport star on deck, Campbell Kerr, number 14. Campbell will be attending the Semper Fi All-American uh, camp in Oklahoma City next this Sunday. Showing off his capable skill set in football. Blake Adams swings at a high fastball as a throw from catcher again is offline, and Chandler Shepard with another steal for the Chargers. So Blake's going to have to choke up and protect here with two strikes. Comes a slow curveball. He's early. Blake's got some dirt on his pants after he played first base in the JV game. Fastball, and he rips it to left field. Like we said, hits it to another guy, but he's hitting it hard. After the bottom of the first, Chargers lead 5-1. We'll head to a commercial break and be back right after that. It's been a long time coming, but it's finally here. Right now. A new dawn for Oklahoma City professional sports. A new tradition on a proud sports landscape. Professional soccer has arrived. Are you ready? Head on down to the Charger Court to buy your latest in school apparel. Range from t-shirts to sweatpants and even those nifty bleacher seats. You'll always find the perfect Charger gear. Not only will you show off your Charger pride, but you'll be helping improve the school in many ways, such as classroom activity funding. Come Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 to 2. Tuesday and Thursday, 10 to 4. And don't come Saturday and Sunday because we won't be there. Welcome back, Stevenson Field, Stadium 11. Chargers put the bat on the ball early. <coughs> and it found some holes. Some timely base running. Chargers lead 5-1. They got six hits to get those five runs. Now hitting for the Cyclones, the pitcher, Donald Albers, sophomore. Excuse me, senior. Caleb's back in the lineup as the wind is picking up again to right field. And he pumps a first pitch strike in there. Go 
another strike low in the zone. Well, that's a big emphasis with the coaching staff is that first pitch strike. That's what they're looking for with all their pitchers. Good things happen. O2 count in the windup. Off speed pitch high and inside for a ball. Only strikeout so far. Caleb. Here's the first possible play in the play in the field. As Fisher bobbles it, makes an errant throw. Bernie Zell is there to back him up, so that's the first error for the Chargers, something we haven't seen as of late. Gonna have a courtesy runner for the Chargers. Looks like it's number four, Mason McClintock. And now batting, Riley Staten, sophomore second baseman. Scoreboard here at Stevenson Field shows a, a hit. Hopefully they'll replace that with an error. I would have to agree on that. That's definitely an error. Soft fly ball in the right field. Dawson Evans is going to have a play at first base as courtesy runner got off a little far. So good catch and throw there from Dawson after the first pitch swinging. Now we'll have one out with the eight-hole hitter, number nine, Dylan Rhodes, up to the plate. Look to see if the Chargers throw over for the aggressive courtesy runner. Instead, we'll throw it to plate, swing and a miss. Strike one. Another first pitch strike. There's my spouse. I have to say hi to my spouse. Low, fastball. One on one. Caleb takes a sign and checks the runner at first. Short lead. Rope to left field. Campbell Kerr is there. Make the play, and he gets the ball into Roman Fanshawe for the second out of the inning. So after going three for three with strikeouts in the first, Caleb gets two <coughs> flyouts in the second inning. Now the left fielder, the junior, number seven, Greg Cadigan, hitting at the bottom of the lineup. High and inside fastball for ball one. Well, there's been a lot of Cadigans go through Cassidy. The same thing. Four or five of them. I've been coaching football for 25 years, and I bet I can remember at least three or four of them. Always good athletic, off good athletes. As Gray takes a, another ball. A little tongue twister for me there. He has a pretty good hit in between center and right field. The ball's going to get away from Joe Buckendorf, and the pinch runner, Matt McClintock, is going to have a chance to score here as Greg Cadigan heads the third. Throw from Jack Lumetal is going to be offline and late. So the triple, Greg Cadigan scores the second run of the game for the Cassidy Cyclones. Pretty big hit by a nine-hole hitter there. I would agree. Got to the fence, got good speed, drove in a run. Attempted bunt here from the leadoff hitter, Colin Morris with the runner on third. One strike now as it goes over the press box. I believe we talked about that in the first inning. He's always a threat for bunting. Good speed. I believe he's going to play football somewhere, isn't he? Colorado School of Mines, I believe. This is his first year at Cassidy after spending the majority of his high school career at Moore. Good stop by Zell there, saved a run probably. 
on a low pitch, 2-1 count. Ball three in the dirt. Caleb's still going to stick with the stretch. Runner on third base. Greg Gattigan takes his lead into the grass. Rip down the first base line. That's right down the base path. That's Scores a run. That could be a triple. easy triple. Dawson Evans throws it into Roman Fansocker for the double cut. <coughs> and it will hold Colin Morris to a triple with an errant throw there. We could have seen uh, inside the park. So Caleb Feller goes up back-to-back -back triples to the nine leadoff hitter. And that'll take the score to five to three. So a little two-out rally here from the Cyclones. Caleb wanted to go there to the lineup. Coach Draper advised against it, so he'll stick in the stretch. And he pumps a first pitch fastball on there. So now he's getting back ahead. 0-1 count. <laughs> Swing and a miss low. 0-2 count, two outs here in the top of the second. Take some pie and meat to end the inning. Pretty good battle back there on three straight strikes. Caleb to end the inning after giving up two big triples. So after giving up three hits and two runs, Chargers lead 5-3 after the top of the second. Charger Division would like to thank official sponsor RS Fuel Convenience Store. Make a pit stop on the south side of Memorial Road between Portland and May Avenue. High performance fuel for your car and for you. Thank you to our official sponsor, the Steelman Clinic, where losing weight is a winning game. To get in the game, call 405-755-4600. I think I need to write that number down, I do believe. What do you think, Coop? <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Uh, need something to do this weekend? Check out the Spring Review on Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 3 p.m. Also, if you'd like to get the latest Charger Vision updates, Follow HH Chargers on Twitter, Instagram, and Vine. Like us on Facebook for updates, special features, and more. If you're in town for the Swing Review on Saturday, you should come by the alumni game that we were talking about. Coach Draper's done a good job of trying to get the school involved, and now he's trying to get the alumni involved. So on Friday night, with senior night, he is inviting all the former players to come by and have some uh, little dinner and watch the game, and then on Saturday morning get up. Uh, there's going to be a... Home run derby at 9 a.m. I think, and then you're gonna put on the cleats and face the varsity and JV team. Gonna you get coached by Kelly Allen. You gonna bring your talents, Coop? Oh yeah, I'll be here. We're gonna wear the stirrups and everything. I thought I might enter the home run derby and get in my trot. If I do play in the game, get a base hit, I'll probably ask for a pinch runner. But there's a good chance that I will go deep. Really? Absolutely. Over the green monster? Absolutely. Play within yourself, good things happen. That's been my motto. <laughs> All right, so now we're back up at the top of the lineup for the Chargers. Campbell Kerr. <laughs> Campbell's 0 for 1 today. Takes an off-speed pitch for a strike. I bet Cassidy pitcher that last inning threw a lot of pitches. What do you think? I think so. I'd say it was close to 30. Campbell sends one to the right field into the wind tunnel. And it gets over the right fielder's head. Two hop to the, to the warning track. Campbell's hustle around second to, for a possible triple. Throw is nowhere in time as Campbell up easy with no slide for a triple to open up the bottom of the second inning. So no ducks in the pond again for Jack Blumenthal. Coop, when's the last time you've seen three triples in a row, three of the last four batters? Triple's a pretty tough feat to accomplish, don't you think? Yep, this is a good guy to have another one, though, as he leads the team for the Chargers with 10.
Good opportunity here to get two runners on base for the middle lineup again. Jack Blumenthal <coughs> sends one to center field. Possible opportunity for a tag. Campbell Kerr gets a pretty good throw from the center fielder. It's going to triple hop the catcher. Campbell Kerr is up easy. RBI sack fly, though, for Jack Blumenthal. Chargers hitting the ball hard. Most of their outs have been right at somebody, so. Early in the count, too. First offering outside for a ball. He golfs one in the right field. Right it's in the wind. Back. Oh. Surprised he caught that one. Looks like he was going to stumble and fall. Fish didn't get all that. It didn't no. look like kind of golfed it out, kind of protected the plate a little bit. and it, it got up in the wind, but just didn't hit it square on the bat. That was very little bat, a lot of muscle there from Fish. <laughs> As the cleanup hitter, Brendan Utell, steps to the plate. A little different lighting today for varsity players in, in this game as they usually play the early of the two games. Today playing at 6.30. That one's got a chance to drop over the first baseman, and it does. So a bloop single over the first baseman's <coughs> head for Bern, for Bernie Zell. And now Buckendorf will come up to the plate with another runner on base. Well, it's amazing when you're hot like that, you get a lot of those Texas leaguers to fall in there too. You're, just, you're going good. He had a couple of those last night too. Also been hitting the ball really hard, so it's baseball gods are with him. Another good lead from Brennan as he gets a pickoff temp. He's going to come to third with no attempt at a throw at all as they're just trying to get the ball back in the infield. So an errant pickoff attempt hits Brennan as at third base, and we're going to see a curse runner again. So Bernie can get his gear on with two outs. Preston Taylor again on third base. So as Bernie was taking a good lead, they tried to take advantage of it. He couldn't connect the throw with the catch. He ends up on third base. So Joe's going to have a good chance at the base hit to drive in another run. Ball low. 1 0 count. Joe's really been hitting the ball hard, straight up the middle. He likes to go right up the middle. Puts a little pressure on the pitcher. They've got to be ready. Stretch from Albers in the pitch. Pretty good cut there on the off speed, though. 1-1 one, one count. You can switch after the next uh, transition. Dawson Evans on deck just gave me a wink, said he's ready to go. This next one, he's going to rip it. Good to hear, like confidence in the player. High fastball over Joe's head. 2-1 count. Wait, so you just tell him that you, you were in charge of this? Pretty good cut on the high fastball. Takes it to 2-2-2, so get your twos out. I'd like to see a wild pitch here and get an extra run in here. I think he was fooled ball that. call there from the umpire. Kind of fooled me. 3-2 count after the off-speed pitch. So ball four, then a throw back to third base. Not in time to get Preston Taylor, so there will be runners in the corner again for the Chargers as Dawson Evan comes to the plate. Fantastic sophomore duo here, Dawson Evans and Roman fan soccer.
The late steal again, Preston Taylor on third base. No offer in a second, Preston gets back. So runners on second and third after the called first strike. Dawson just ahead of it. 0 2 count now. Shadows are creeping in from left field, looks like. Should be in the infield here shortly. Lights are already on here, Steve Field. Are those bats flying around? I don't know. They keep on flying in and out of the dugout, so possibly. Another foul ball from Dawson as Coach Draper fields and throws it back to the pitcher. Receives a nice ribbing from his players in the dugout. Stretching the pitch. High fastball. Not many Chargers have been reaching for that high fastball in recent games, which is good to see. One two count now for Dawson. Ducks on the pawn again. <coughs> he reaches, skies one in between center and right as Colin Morse flies in, makes the catch for the third out of the inning. So Chargers score one on two hits and lead 6 3 going into third inning. We'll be right back after this commercial. We don't just certify our pre-owned vehicles. We inspect, analyze, and recondition each one until it's nothing short of a genuine certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz for the next new owner. Available only at your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. Visit today for exceptional offers. Welcome back. Caleb Feller still on the mound for the Chargers. This will be his third inning of work. As a three-hole hitter for the Cyclones, Garrett Horton, the DH, back up to the plate. Garrett has quite a lot of gear on today. Pad on his left ankle and left elbow, sunglasses and two different sleeves. First pitch is low. Just missed with the fastball. Pretty good pace here as Garrett steps back in and as I say that, he steps out and calls for time. Wind up again from Gefeller. Low in the dirt, good block from Brennan. 2-0 count. As the ball sails over G's head and hits second base. Looked like he ever threw that last pitch. What do you think? I think so, too. Trying to get ahead and trying to make a statement with the fastball. Threw it in the dirt. Shook off the first offense, so he must have wanted to throw the fastball really bad. Another fastball inside and low. Rushes Horton off the plate at Tad. 3-0 count now. Taking all the way. First walk of the day after hitting a batter in the first inning. So now a sophomore cleanup hitter after hitting a deep shot to center field as the coaches readjust the defensive line for the Chargers. Number 16, Avery Weeks, first baseman, back up to the plate. 
Short lead at first base. As Garrett isn't even getting to the first cut. All the Cyclones seem to be taking a backward step to the first step at first base. A little interesting. Ground ball to Fisher. Chance for two here. Turn to Blumenthal. Taken out at second base, but doesn't even matter because they turn it for two. Charger coaches up off their seats to complain about Horton sliding cleats up at Blumenthal, but didn't phase him at all. He got one of those last last week against Santa Fe. Chargers have turned a lot of double plays in recent games. Charger coaches didn't like that. He came in hard, which is okay, good baseball, but they, you got to keep your cleats down. You can't have them up. Breck Draper, Coach Breck Draper shows his speed chasing a foul ball. Foul ball, excuse me. 1-1 one, one count now. Ranger Johnson has... Caleb was back in the windup after the double play. Pitcher's best friend, the double play, the double killing. Take a seat, both of you. <laughs> Two one count now for Johnson. <laughs> Swing and a miss on the low offering. <clears throat> Two two, so get your twos out. Swing and a miss, take some pine meat. It's five or six strikeouts, I believe, through three. No runs, no hits for the Cyclones. Charger Campus Store has all the clothing accessories you need to show your Charger pride. And did you know that everything you spend at the store goes directly to teachers, classrooms, and programs like Charger Vision? Store hours are 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on school days. We would like to thank Heim Orthodontics for sponsoring Charger Vision and giving so many Chargers something to smile about. Call 405-755-8151 or visit okcbraces.com on the web. The Advancement Office would like to give a huge thank you to our donors to this year's annual fund. Your gift is the cornerstone for ongoing excellence at Heritage Hall. The Advancement Office is happy to report that the school has received over $380,000 toward our goal of $425,000. For more info or to give to the annual fund, please visit www.heritagehall.com slash AF. Same pitcher this inning for the Chargers as you get a look at the dugout for the, excuse me, the same pitcher for the Cyclones as you get a look at the dugout for the Chargers. There's a multi-sport star in the on-deck circle again. Caleb Gefeller, number 55, starting right guard on the Charger State Championship football team this year. Rowan Fansocker up to bat as Alvarez goes in the windup. Rowan rips one in between third and shortstop for his second hit of the day. Same spot as the first time he was up at bat. So the seven hole hitter has been hitting pretty hot for the Chargers as the eight hole hitter, Caleb Gefeller, and pitcher is back up to the plate. Coop, I'd like a little shout out to Hoffy Smith. That old Lyme at Cassidy, I've known him for a long time. <laughs> Good to see you, Hoffy. How are you? Looks like the second baseman's got a little something in his eye here. Maybe a bloody nose. Can't really tell he's holding his wrist up above his face. Did the ball hit him or? I missed it. I don't think the ball hit him. Maybe on the relay throw, it hit him in the nose. So he's going to get attended to. 
remember high school rules allow if you come out of the game as a starter, you're allowed to re-enter one time. But once you come out the second time, you cannot re-enter again. So it looks like he's going to be replaced in the field by number four, Mason McClintock, the courtesy runner in the first that scored the opening run. Do you see what happened there, Coop? I'm being told that on the relay throw, the ball bounced up and hit second baseman Riley Staten in the nose. Well, you hate to see that with nose. anybody. That just I didn't realize he was in the play. I thought it was a maybe dirt or something because of the wind being flown into his eyes, but it looks like it was a bloody nose. Caleb Caffello rips one to third. No chance to double play as Roman Fansarker had a good lead and a good jump. So that'll be the first out of the inning. 5-3. First from Blake Adams back up to the plate. After he lined out his first time at bat. Looking to get an RBI with a runner on second base. Keep the inning going before getting to the meat of the lineup. He rips one in between center and left field. Right, left field, no chance to get the runner at second out as Blake hustles in for a double and an RBI. Good little rip there over the shortstop for Blake Adams as he shows some love for his teammates in the dugout. Threw his palms up to, to me over here. We had a little side <laughs> yeah. bet. He wanted to, wanted to spend the night with Chandler Shapper tonight. He had to get a hit to be able to do it, so I guess I'm going to have to follow through and <laughs> let him do it so they can get a little studying done after the game. Yeah, right. <laughs> Top of the lineup. Here we go. Campbell Kerr, left fielder, takes the first pitch high. Campbell Kerr, the energizer bunny on the team, I think. The heartbeat. If you see the dream catcher that the Chargers take on the road or the hockey helmet, that's Campbell Kerr's doing. <laughs> Campbell's a little up in the box today. <coughs> As he readies the 2-0 offering. And he rips one to left field. Hit so hard that it was caught. Hit right at the left fielder. He had to make a couple steps to his right. Blake Adams, though, gets back to second base. Good hit there from Campbell. Just hit right at left fielder Greg Cadigan. So now Jack Blumenthal back up to the plate. Chargers already have 10 hits, so three innings, not quite three innings. Three innings, excuse me. At the big opening inning of five runs, and since then have had a run in each inning. First pitch ball to Jack Blumenthal. This one's roped into center field. Pretty good play there from Colin Morris as he came in and dove to make the third out of the inning. Pretty athletic play from the athletic receiver and quarterback. Saved a run, that's for sure. Good play. So after a run and a hit, Chargers lead 7-3 going into the fourth inning. We'll be right back after this commercial. We don't just certify our pre-owned vehicles. We inspect, analyze, and recondition each one until it's nothing short of a genuine certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz for the next new owner. Available only at your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. Visit today for exceptional offers. 
Spartan College of Aeronautics and Technology's flight program is designed to get you flying in your first week. You can spend less time in lectures and more time practicing what you've learned, so you could be certified in only 12 months. Also, our degree graduates are able to go for their ATP certification with reduced flight hours. Train for a career as a cargo, corporate, or airline pilot. For more information on starting an exciting new career, go to spartan.edu. This game is brought to you by Fuzzy's Taco Shop, Texadelphia Social Grill, Energy FC Soccer, Mercedes-Benz of Oklahoma City, 77 Energy, and Spartan College. Welcome back to Seabson Field. Pitcher Donald Albers up to the plate. Shadows are creeping in again as Mark said. Now covering the left side of the infield and the majority of the outfield. Chargers lead 7-3. Top of the fourth inning. Ball low on the first offering from Gefeller. Swing and a miss for strike one. One one count. Pumped in there for strike two. <coughs> Caleb's going to have a good chance to go the distance here as he's been efficient early. Off speed pitch low and swung out. Throw it around the horn because you're going to take some pine meat for the first out. That's six meters, isn't it? At least. At least. So Mason McClintock will now hit as Riley Staten is still out after suffering a bloody nose in the last inning. Swing and a miss, strike one. Caleb's fastball has been lively today. Off-speed pitch called strike. 0-2 count now for McClintock in his first at bat of the evening. It's kind of in a groove right now. As I jinxed him, of course. One, two count. Caleb agrees to the pitch and the wind up. Low again. 2 2. That's Off speed pitch, take some pine meat. Backwards <laughs> K. Back to back strikeouts for Caleb. like a, just a little heavier Nolan Ryan right now. He's sending him <laughs> down, K after K. Caleb's helping his defense out as any ground ball is going to be difficult for Joe Wheeler to see as the sun's going to be right in his eyes, peeking over the Stevenson Fieldhouse. Strike one, he's in a groove like you said, Mark. <laughs> Good little rhythm. He's just waiting to pitch. As soon as they step in the box, it's coming. Strike two. Dylan Rhodes, the sophomore third baseman, is hitting now. Bender. Off-speed pitch low in the dirt. Good block by Brennan. Like we said, fantastic defensive presence behind the plate. One, two offering. It's also low. Eight hole hitter for the Cyclones isn't reaching. You know, earlier in the earlier in the game, first, second inning was missing high. He's missing low now. That's where the coaches want you to be. Woo! Pretty good off speed pitch there. Not to the liking of the umpire though, as the count goes full. So here's the payoff pitch.
Strike three, but a foul tip. Bounce off the Bernie Zell's chest protector. We're getting word that the girls' soccer team just accomplished a two to one victory. I believe it was at Carl Albert. I think the boys are probably right behind. I so. think you're right. So the second payoff pitch. Caleb. Off speed, foul towards the dugout. Good little dig there from Coach Draper. Coach Draper showing some skills. Looked a little bit like me in my playing days. Absolutely. It was a great stop by him. He had his eyes closed. His nickname was Ray. <laughs> so after two foul balls, Caleb with another payoff pitch. Pretty Woo. good spot there. But it's low as Dylan Rhodes earns a walk. So now the nine-hole hitter, Gray Cadigan, who in his last at-bat had a triple. So even though he's a nine-hole hitter, he's nothing to be trifled with. Boy, G wanted that last pitch. He was four paces off the mound heading towards the bench. Quite surprised. So now he's working out of the stretch, something he hasn't been real comfortable with yet. Have our drone flying today in center field. A lot of wildlife at Charger Field. Except for the drone is an electronic device there, Mark. Oh, I didn't see that. I was look, looking at the bats again and the geese. 1-1 and one, one count now for Gray Cadigan. Oh, I see it now. I thought that was a pterodactyl. <laughs> Excuse me. Gray, not very close on that. 1-1 one, one count, so the count is 1-2. Decent lead on first base for Rhodes. Swing and a miss, takes some pine meat. Third strike out there for Caleb Gefeller of the inning. And we're going to head to the bottom of the fourth. Score holding 7-3. If your company would like to sponsor our Charger Vision crew, please contact Luke Steelman at chargervision at heritchall.com. Got a couple words about the golf team, Mark? Yeah, golf is in full swing. Recently at the 4A golf preview held at Lake After North, Coach Andy Bogert's Chargers took first place with a team score of 292. Individual scores, Bo Turntine shot a 68, came in first. Brick, Blake Brigham, 72, tied for fourth. Trip Harris and Carson Sparkman, 76, and Andrew McDonald, a 78. JV team won their tournament the same day, didn't they? I believe so. He's, he's got North a North Invitational. He's got a pretty strong group there. He's got five or six of them really battling for those top five spots, and uh, I think they'll know by the end of the month who the five are going to be to go try to repeat as state champion. So he feels pretty confident about his squad and uh, looking forward to it. Got a new pitcher here for the Chargers. Cyclones. Excuse me, Cyclones. <coughs> It's going to be the right fielder, number 12, Andrew Johnson, as you get a look at, at our pterodactyl. <laughs> so, Johnson will come into pitch. And Rhodes will go to right, and Albers will switch to third. Everyone else stays the same, it looks like, on the defensive side for the Cyclones. You ever flown a drone, Coop? I haven't. But I have seen some fatalities with fingers because of them. Hopefully they're going to get a couple good shots of Draper's well-manicured field. It's coming in hot from the left field side, that's for sure. Fans are just kind of mingling, just kind of enjoying themselves. Typical Heritage Hall Cassidy game. Just kind of mingling, getting along. Everybody knows everybody, and the Chargers on top. It's the three hole hitter, Alex Fisher, will come up to the plate. Another multi-sport star, number 25 on deck, Brandon Zell, contemplating football next year. Sure like to have him out. I concur.
So left-handed pitcher now for the Cyclones. Bring his first offering to the heart of the lineup. He also has a funky delivery, but it's good enough for a first pitch strike. Wind is picking up again towards right field as we can barely see the flag. Shifting directions on us now. Good swing and a miss there though. 0-2 count. Chargers are staying aggressive with the new pitcher. Not wasting any time. Getting used to the delivery. Off speed pitch, grounded softly to the new third baseman. High throw and wild up to the fence. So Fish will be safe on the wild throw. Unfortunate for the Cyclones, but Chargers will take that any day. Base runners are base runners. Don't care how they get on. Leadoff runners usually score. What's the percentage on that, Coop? I don't know, but I would say for the Chargers, it has to be up in the 80s. As Brennan rips one into left field, two hop single as now the three and four hitters are on safely here in the bottom of the fourth. Setting the table for Joe Buckendorf. There's that wink from Dawson Evans again. He's ready to go. Joe's having a little trouble seeing the signs of Coach Draper as the sun's slowly creeping beyond the apartment complexes in left field. High offering for 1-0. So Fish and Brennan take good leads at first and second. Boy, Joe gets his money's worth. He takes some cuts. Foul ball towards the circle drive at the lower school. 1-1 one, one count, no outs. Buck is hit on the inside elbow. Good thing it's not his throwing elbow. He's going to take his time walking down to first. He's not happy about it. Dawson Evans, though, is because now he's going to have bases loaded with no outs. Going to have time called here so Buckendorf can gather himself. No rubbing, though, is allowed. He can work it out, but he can't rub it himself. He's fine, though, and he gets on the base and prepares his lead. So Dawson Evans gets his signs from Coach Draper with three ducks on a pond. As Johnson gathers and delivers, ball one high. Chargers looking to blow this one wide open right here. Ball too low. I've been pretty consistent with that low pitch. He hadn't given it to anybody yet. Dawson takes for a strike. 2-1 count now. Johnson in the stretch and the delivery low. No play at the paint as Fisher does not attempt to steal at home on the wild pitch. 3-1 count. Pretty good hitters count right here for Dawson. Roman on deck, licking his chops as he see the ducks on the pond. Good cut there from Dawson, but he just misses. A 3-2 count. This is a big payoff pitch for the new pitcher, Johnson. Johnson a sophomore? Johnson's a senior. Senior. That's a shot. Dawson rips one. That the is a shot. Field. That's got a chance. No chance for the catch, but a two hops to the wall. Having trouble gathering it there is Colin Morris. That'll score too easy as Coach Draper holds up Buckendorf at third. So a double from Dawson Evans, plates two, and the score now 9-3. So now Roman Fansocker, who's been hot of late, We've had a couple RBIs himself today. I have a chance for another two more with two good runners at second and third, so any base hit will likely score two. Uh, 
That'll, he that, pops one into right field. Wynn's going to play with this one, but they're tagging at second and third. Joe Buckendorf's going to score easily as the throw is cut off from right field. So an RBI sack fly the second of the day for the Chargers. Takes the score 10-3. That's the first out of the inning. Caleb Gefeller now has a runner on third. Rowan Fansark has done his job twice, hitting the right side on the ground ball last inning. And now sack fly to the right field, moving both the runners to their next spot on the base pass. Caleb takes first pitch low for a ball. He takes a good rip, but he just misses. Foul tip back to the catcher. So 1-1 one, one count with one out, so get your ones ready, Charger fans. High breaking pitch. Slow one out of the zone. So 2-1 count now for the eight-hole hitter for the Chargers and pitcher. 13 hits for the Chargers, 10 runs. Dawson takes his lead foul. That's not get hit by the ball. Caleb puts a charge into it to center field. Call Morse under the ball to make the catch. Throw will not be in time as Dawson, the good runner, tags and scores. So an RBI, a back-to-back -back RBI sack flies. So 11-3 now for the Chargers. No runners on base, but we're at the top, of the, we're about to be the top of the lineup. So if Blake can get a base hit here, we'll get back to the heart of the lineup and flirt with the 10 after three rule. 10 after four, correct? 10 after three rule is in effect. We are in the fourth inning. Oh, very good. Andrew Johnson's had a tough inning here, giving up four runs. This is the seventh batter he's faced. Off speed, 2-0 count. Blake takes time, taps the plate, and readies for the wind-up pitch. Fastball right at the numbers. Swung on, so 2-1 count now. Low into the dirt, 3-1 now. Batters and pitchers for both sides aren't taking their time fidgeting with different articles of equipment or clothing as they get back on the rubber, back in the plate pretty quickly. Foul ball over the stands. So 3-2-2 count. Payoff pitch here for Johnson. Blake pops it to the shortstop as he gathers under it and makes the play. So after getting quite a few hits and four runs, the Chargers now lead 11-3 going to the top of the fifth. We'll be right back after this commercial break. When you walk into Fuzzy's Taco Shop, you'll know you're in the right place. With the best Baja-style menu in town, we'll have the whole family addicted. Order up. Nachos, tacos, burritos, it doesn't matter. It's like an explosion of flavor in your mouth. We know you've had a long day, and you deserve a break. So bring the crew to one of the Fuzzy's Taco Shop locations in Norman, Oklahoma City, or Stillwater. Welcome to your new addiction. E Back, Charger fans, <coughs> Stevenson Field. We've got a new pitcher in, senior left-hander Jake Rainbolt. Replaces Caleb Gefeller. That's the only defensive change for the Chargers.
This is Jake's fifth appearance. He's got six and two-thirds innings pitched. Started one game. He has one win, no losses. <laughs> Struck out four hitters and has an earned run average of 2.11. <laughs> So Jake will start out his inning and his day of work facing the leadoff. Foul ball to the left side. 0-1 count. So Jake, just like Caleb, gets his day going with an early strike. Well, we're sure giving the left side of the field in a bunt. Showed it. We've got a shift here for the Chargers as – Jack Blumenthal is playing short right field, and Roman Fansocker moves over from shortstop to the right side of second base. And, Kay and Alex Fisher is playing short in on third base. <coughs> so as you can see there, Roman Fansocker is no longer playing his normal shortstop position. He's playing more of a second base position. Outfield has shifted a little bit too as Joe Buckendorf is playing on the right side of second base, and Dawson Evans is playing in between the flag and the scoreboard. No change, though, for the left fielder. Campbell Kerr. Colin Moore swings and misses. 2-2 two -two count. <laughs> Low pitch in the dirt, but blocked by Bernizel, so 3-2 count now. Pretty good off-speed pitch there from, from Jake, but it misses outside. So that's his first walk of the day. And Colin Morris and Speedster will get on first base. So now the catcher, Marshall Lucas, senior, up to the plate as the Charger defense shifts back to normal positions. Joe Buckendorf, however, will shift a little bit to the left side of second base. So he's playing a little left center here. Fastball low, called strike, 0-1 count. So Jake's gotten ahead on both batters. Look to see if we'll get a pickoff move from the lefty as Colin Morris is getting an aggressive lead. And there it is. Colin Morris, Colin Morris gets his uniform dirty for the first time today after making a diving play in the outfield. Off-speed pitch called strike for strike two. Good little off-speed curveball from Jake. You know, the runner at first was going back to uh, first base there, kind of misread him there, so that's a good sign for the Chargers. Morris takes his lead to the first cut as Dawson Evans is pulled in a little bit in his defensive assignment. As Jake steps off and then back on to the rubber. Infield umpires playing pretty close to the mound here. A little poke. Fly ball to second baseman Jack Blumenthal, but Colin Morse gets back for the first out of the inning. So Jake Rainbolt gets his first out as Brennan Nizel comes out to the mound for a little conversation, change up the signs maybe, or get back on the same page. So Garrett Horton, the DH, back to the plate. This is our first time seeing Horton since sliding high on Jack Blumenthal after turning a double play. Jake steps off again, a little confusion one more time. Pick off, good move. We're gonna get a chance here. Off target throw there from Joe Wheeler. Good move there from Jake Rainbolt as he had Colin Morris the whole time. It looks like Colin was going on first move no matter what. So Colin will move to second base. First runner in scoring position for the Cyclones in quite a few innings. For the th now batting the three-hole hitter, Garrett Horton, have a good chance. Low ball in the dirt, 1-0 count. Kind of a strange place for the third base coach to be. He's been always way down the line towards home plate instead of closer to the bag over there. Caught inside, fly ball, camped under to Campbell Kerr for the easy second out of the inning. <coughs> 2-0 count. 
two outs, runner on second. A cleanup hitter, Avery Weeks, who's had a big hit today. Got the first run on the board for the Cyclones. We one out from the run rule. I believe we are, eight after five. Gonna have another shift here. As Fisher will guard the line at third, Roman will shift over towards third a little bit, and Jack Blumenthal will play basically behind second base. Pretty good coaching there from Draper as he pulls one left. Off the wall, high and off the wall is Avery Weeks. <coughs> Deep double, pretty good defensive play there from Campbell Kurz. He gave a good run at it. Had no real chances, it was too high on the fence to make a play on it, but he gets the ball back quickly to limit the damage to a double on one run. Looks like we're playing another inning. <laughs> At least a half an inning. As the pitcher, Andrew Johnson, will step up to the plate. Second left-handed batter to face the left-handed pitcher of this inning. Low ball outside. Good play by Edzel. Jake flashes the Nakoma leather on his glove. Wind up in a pulled foul ball towards the first base coach. Unable to make the play. 1-1 one, one count. Ex-Cassidy ball player, I'm sure. <laughs> Swing and a miss for the third pitch of the at-bat. So 1-2 count now. Looks like we've got a little movement down in the Casty bullpen. As we said, the feature player for the Cyclones, Colin Morris, looks to warm up for what could be the last inning. Swing and a miss, drop third strike. So Rainbow lim limits the damage to one. <coughs> and Andrew Johnson could take some pine before he comes out for the last inning of work. I'd like to thank 77 Energy for supporting the Charger Vision program. Visit them on the web at 77NRG.com to learn more about their official oil field services. A huge thank you to Fields and Futures for supporting Charger Vision. Check them out online at fieldsandfutures.com to find out how they're empowering coaches and kids to do something bigger than themselves. Fields and Futures, igniting success, one field, one coach, one student at a time. As we said earlier, the boys' soccer team is in action now. Hair Charles soccer teams have Coach Riley boys uh, now at 9-1 of the season. They're consistently steamrolling district opponents and look like the favorite to win their third consecutive title. Coach Brewster's girls are keeping space, pace with the boys at 10-1 this season, including a hard-fought senior night win last week over Noble. Both teams are getting to the toughest part of their schedule with road contests against district contenders Capitol Hill, Carl Albert tonight, and El Reno. Go Chargers. So like we said earlier, Colin Morris is the closer for Cyclones, and he'll try to stymie the top of the lineup for the Chargers to continue this game. Shout out to Doc Bondurant in the stands tonight. Good to see him. I probably got a visit coming up shortly with him. <laughs> so Andrew Johnson will go back to right field. Colin Morris, Morris will come pitch. Dylan Rhodes will move from right field to second base, and Matt McClintock will move to center field, replacing Colin Morris. In high school baseball, the run rules are 10 after 3 and 8 after 5, so if the Chargers plate one run here, the game will be over, so that's the importance and the reasoning behind Cyclones bringing in their closer because they want to extend this game as long as they can. <laughs> but Chargers will have something to say about that as they have the top of their lineup coming to bat. Campbell Kerr leading off the bottom of the fifth inning. Kerr's hit the ball hard all night tonight. He really has. Hopefully he can get on base and rattle the Cyclone defense a little bit. Get the chance for the big hitters in the middle lineup to plate a couple runs. So Colin Morris will line up in a windup to begin with. 
his day of work. He pumps a fastball outside. Significant change in speed from Andrew Johnson to Colin Morris. Campbell rips one foul over our camera on the first baseline. 2-1 count now. Campbell fights off another one into the dugout, the Chargers. So 2-2 count now. I bet we got a bender coming. What do you think? Four straight fastballs. He is fidgeting with his glove. And there, there it was. was. Drop third strike, and Campbell hustled down as always. <coughs> Not in time. As the drop third strike leads to the first out of the inning. So now Jack Blumenthal will try to get the inning going. Fastball low and outside. Jack's been rocking a pretty impressive beard this season. Two months into it. Fastball low. 2-0 count. Tom Morse wasn't too happy about that. Excuse me, Coop. I didn't mean to do that. You ever had a, had a beard? Not anything like Jack's. No kind of beard. Jack steps out as he didn't like the rhythm that Colin was in. So he rips one a little late, but he rips it to right field for a single. For the first damage done on Colin Morris at the hands of Jack Blumenthal. And that'll bring up the three-hole hitter, Alex Fisher. Jack Blumenthal on the attempt steal. It's thrown out at second base. Didn't, Colin didn't. Morris had a little slide step there quickly to the plate. So two down now for the Chargers. Didn't look like he got a great jump on that. <laughs> Haven't had a good throw yet from the catcher, but that one was on target. Overthrows one high for ball two. If I were the Chargers, I would try to step out and slow down Morris. As he's... Wait. Step on the plate and not taking any time for. He's basically throwing fastball unless he waits. He said we're done. Three-zero count. I had no clue what you just said. What? Fisher's taking all the way. Ball low. He's been consistent. The up on that low pitch. Catcher's having a word with the ump. Ump will have none of it. Look for Brennan to take his time getting ready. He's not going to let Colin dictate the speed of this at bat. Colin Morris, quick throw over to first base. It's like he's taking his wind up when the umpire still got his hand out. Time was called, but Morris didn't really care. So, slide step from Morris, fouled towards the Charger dugout. 0-1 count now. Like we said, Brennan is taking his time and he's dictating the speed of his at bat. Small lead for Fisher at first. First good off speed pitch that we've seen from Morris. Matt drops in 0 2. Whoa! 
Another throw over to first base for Morris. Fisher hasn't had much of a lead. Fourth throw over to first. Not really sure what he's trying to accomplish with the throws. Fisher's got about a two-yard lead. Fouled off towards third base. So Easel, Brendan is fighting off the pitches, looking to get one on the good part of the bat. Try to lengthen this inning. And he does. This one's ripped towards left That's field. Ripped. That could be. One hop to left fielder off the fence. But they're going to hold up Fisher at third. So that's a double. Two out double there from Beasel. Great hit with no balls and two strikes on their protective plate and just ripped it. And we're going to have a courtesy runner again here for the catcher, Beasel, with two outs. His run means nothing. The runner on third's a ball game. So Buck will try to end this game with runners on second and third with two outs. Really good hit there from Beasel. And they're going to intentionally walk Beasel to get to Dawson Evans. Dawson's going to have a chance to pay back the Cyclones for not believing in him with here to end the game. How often does that happen to you, Coop? Walk the guy in front of you to get to you. Never. I know the feeling. Oh, one count now to start it off with Evans. First high leg kick out of the stretch for Morris. Oh, two count now. Dawson needs to choke up here and protect the plate. There's going to be a play at the play here after a wild pitch. Say. Good throw. Good throw. Morris was there in time. That unlucky bounce there as the ball careened off the pad. So that's the first inning. The Chargers will not score 11 4. We'll be back right after this commercial break for the top of the sixth inning. That was a. That was a. It's been a long time coming, but it's finally here. Right now. A new dawn for Oklahoma City professional sports. A new tradition on a proud sports landscape. Professional soccer has arrived. Are you ready? Head on down to the Charger Court to buy your latest in school apparel. Range from t-shirts to sweatpants and even those nifty bleacher seats. You'll always find the perfect Charger gear. Not only will you show off your Charger pride, but you'll be helping improve the school in many ways, such as classroom activity funding. Come Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 to 2. Tuesday and Thursday, 10 to 4. And don't come Saturday and Sunday, because we won't be there. This game is brought to you by Fuzzy's Taco Shop, Texadelphia Social Grill, Energy FC Soccer, Mercedes-Benz of Oklahoma City, 77 Energy, and Spartan College. Going to have a pinch hitter here for the chart for the Cyclones. William Walter, the JV catcher and courtesy runner, will hit for number 18, Donald Albers. Or excuse me, Riley State. Walter's aggressive early. Swing and a miss, strike one. It's a 1-1 one, one count now for Walter. Ball outside. 2-1 count. <laughs> oh, 
Walter, the pinch hitter, single after falling behind 0-1. So now hitting is going to be number four, Matt McClintock. He just threw his bat out there and let the, the pitch do the work for him. So Walter was pinch in for Albers, as now McClintock is hitting. Ball high for 1-0 count. As we're getting word from Carl Albert that the boys' soccer team is leading 1-0 at half. Pickoff attempt for Walters. Pretty close there, but he's safe. Ball high, 2-0. Good comeback pitch there from Rainbolt. Brings the count to 2-1, and one. so he has a little word with himself. Another pickoff attempt, stopped by Joe Wheeler. 2-1 so count still. Ball high into the backstop, so a wild pitch there moves the runner to second base. A 3-1 count now as Walter moves to second base. Well, McClintock has walked, and Beasel will have a conversation with Jake at the mound to try to calm him down after delivering two high pitches. Eight hole coming up here. Yep, Dylan Rhodes, who's played three different positions tonight, third, right, and second base. Chargers looking for a ground ball here. That'd be a nice way to thwart this little mini rally the Cyclones have going. Rainbow looks at both runners and delivers the pitch. Just a bit outside, of, I guess. It looks pretty good from over here. Another ball high, 2-0 count, as Coach Seymour will come have a conversation with the pitcher and catcher. Third baseman Alex Fisher will join the party. Running on close to two hours game time. Kind of dragging a little bit right now. We're kind of in a pretty good groove. And they got to run in the fifth to keep the game alive and trying to put a few more on the board. Coach Seymour's imploring Rainbolt to finish out in front and not stop his motion halfway. The reasoning for him throwing these pitches high. Conversation worked as we get a strike on a foul ball. Another update from the soccer game. Boys lead 2-0 with 11 minutes left in the second half in a crucial district game against Carl Albert. Rhodes will square around a bunt. No chance and an opportunity though as the ball gets past Beasel. And the runners will move up second and third. The Cyclones trying to play a little small ball. They didn't have an opportunity with the wild pitch. So 3 1 count now. Nobody out. Runners on second and third. A rip to second through shortstop. Roman fans on his runner in his glove. There's a play at, the th at third, though. Pretty good play there from Campbell Kerr. Throw is on time. Tag was also on time. 
McClintock slid a little high and got Fisher in the ankle. But he's called safe. So runners on the corner now as Draper checks on third baseman Fisher. He's gonna, Coach Draper's gonna have a conversation with Rainbolt. That's a second visit, isn't he done? So the single to left field played a run and will be the last batter that Rainbow will face. As there will have to be some defensive changes for the Chargers as it looks like second baseman Jack Blumenthal will come in from second base to try to close out the game. Campbell Kerr will move from left field into the infield and the freshman Chuck Shepard will move to left field. So, having a little difficulty on the in-stadium scoreboard as a score shows 11-3 here, but count is 11-5 Chargers. The all everything, Campbell Kerr comes into second, played third last night, started out and left tonight, so. Just because he plays all positions either doesn't mean he's a letdown in any of them. Very solid at all of them and gets the job done. Reminds me of Charlie Hustle. Remember Charlie Hustle, Mr. Pete Rose? He is a little bit like Pete Rose. Wears the same number, I think, too, 14. I believe so. Not quite the physique, though. Pete Rose, that is. <laughs> <laughs> so Jack Lumenthal, the senior, second base will move, try to close out the inning and possibly the game. For the Chargers in the top of the six after Cyclone scored one run. They'll have runners on first and third for nine hole hitter Gray Cadigan, who had a triple in the second inning. Bunch of different style of pitching today from the Chargers. We had the big right hander and the crafty left hander. Now the shorter right handed version. He gets ahead early with the 0-1 count. Good chance here for a double play. Corners are playing in. Oh, so we had a pass ball there. Ball got underneath the umpire. Beasel couldn't find it. Once he did, he fired on a second base. Campbell Kerr came up in front of the base to cut it off to make the possibility of a play at third base. So now runners at second and third, 1-1 one, one count. And, an, and another timely hit from Cadigan as he scorts one into left field. They'll score one. So, no, so now we have an 11-6 ball game. With the runners on the corner. Now the top of the lineup, Colin Morris is up at bat. Chargers scored another run, excuse me, another goal on soccer. So that score is 3-0. Time left in the second half. Ball one to the leadoff hitter and now pitcher Colin Morris. Cyclones pecking away. Chargers check the attempt at a swing, and he's safe, so it'll bring the count to 2 0. A little shifting of the defense as the right fielder, Dawson Evan, moves closer to the line. It goes right to the wickets of Joe Wheeler. <coughs> Dawson Evan bobbles it in right field. He gets into the, to the infield before. Greg Caddick can get an attempt at scoring. So 11-7 ball game now. Getting a little hairy here for the Chargers. 
Runners on second and third. Nobody out. Is that We're gonna have some defensive changes, okay. So that all everything Camel Kerr will come into the dugout, put on his gear, and Beasel, the catcher, will take his off, go to the mound, and Jack Blumenthal will go back to second base. While we've got time as the catchers change gear, we'd like to thank Heim Orthodontics for sponsoring Charger Vision and giving so many Chargers something to smile about. Call 405-755-8151 or visit okcbraces.com on the web. Also like to thank our official sponsor, the Steelman Clinic, where losing weight is a winning game. To get in the game, call 405-755-4600. So Beasel not only have, having to take off his gear, he's going to have to take off his <coughs> taped wrist because he cannot have any white on his arms. Chargers have a double header on Thursday, I believe, against Tecumseh in the number one and 4A. Weatherford comes in, so they're trying to save their top four pitchers and unfortunately had to go to the bullpen to get Beasel, Beasel in there. has appeared in six games and pitched 21.1 innings this year. He has three wins, one loss, and one save, and his only save opportunity. He's got 23 strikeouts and has a 1.31 ERA. No Charger pitcher has a higher ERA than 3.3, as the team's ERA is 1.822. First time we're seeing Beasel without a mask on or a helmet as he moves into the field. Hey, watch his hands. So if nobody out runs on second and third, possibility for a bunt to play another run. As the two-hole hitter and catcher Marshall Lucas, the right-hand batter, steps to the plate. Cyclones have scored three runs in this sixth inning. Still have no outs. Lucas wanted time there, but the pitcher had already started his windup, so swing and a miss for 0-1 count. He was way late there. Beasel's working out of the stretch. Runners on second and third. High leg kick as there's not a threat to run, and he pounds another one in there to the zone, so no two count. Beasel lines up on the first base side of the rubber. Waiting for the signs from Campbell Kerr and Coach Seymour. He steps off. Morris at second base was getting a lead that Beasel was not comfortable with. Cadigan takes his lead into the grass at third base. Lucas is late again as he fouls it back towards the screen. Lights off the 0-2 offering. Look for something out of the zone here from Diesel. Shakes off the first offer and agrees to the second one. Takes some pine meat. First out of the sixth inning. Strikeout Beasel's 28th of the season. 24th, excuse me. I was waiting for that comment. It's been a while since we had yes. meat. DH. Three-hole hitter, Garrett Horton, back up to the plate. Yeah. 
Horton's buttoned up his jersey from earlier in the game. He had a couple buttons open like Jose Canseco. Pickoff attempt at third. Didn't he have all the gear on his arms and his legs and ankles? He's also ditched the, you're right, ditched the <coughs> ankle guard. And we have a final score count from the boys' soccer game as they take another victory, 3-0 final. So congratulations to Coach Riley and the boys' soccer team. He's got it rolling, that's for sure. Beasel brushes Horton back with a high inside fastball. Horton bumps back into the box, though, and readies for the 1-0 pitch. And he gets plunked right underneath his <coughs> rib cage. Maybe got him on the elbow guard. Horton's not very happy about it as he flings his elbow guard down to the ground. He's in a lot of pain there at first base. Takes his helmet off as the coach is trying to get him to calm down and maybe take a breath. Might want to pull that guard down a little bit lower next time. What's the point of it if it's not going to block anything? <clears throat> Pretty hot hitter coming up, isn't it? He Just is. clean up. Avery Weeks, Weeks has had quite a lot of shots. <coughs> Boy, three so, innings ago, you would never thought they'd had the tie and, rain come, tie and run coming to the plate. No, you wouldn't have. So Horton says he's good. He's gathered his composure at first base. This is definitely not like Mark said, the guy that the Chargers wanted to see at this opportunity with the, being the tying run at the plate. The bases are loaded for weeks. One out. Beasel gets ahead early, though. 0-1 count. He hasn't thrown a bender yet, has he? I don't think he has. Tends to get him a little bit low, probably trying to stay away from a wild pitch. There it is. And he fights one off in the right field. That scores one. Beat Dawson bobbles it again in left field, in right field. So the throw comes <laughs> in. Single for weeks. He's been very hot. Has quite a few RBIs. So now the score 11 to 9. So a five run inning here at the top of the six for the Cyclones as Andrew Johnson comes to the plate. I'd like to get a double play here, get out of this inning. Another blader. Another blooper. Make 11-10. Chandler's going to get him. Plate. Low throw. Got a Gosh. chance. Oh, we had a chance there at the plate, but we're going to get the guy out at third after a back play by Campbell. There's a pretty good chance there to get the guy out at the plate. Camel instead took the throw without, didn't want to risk it. Got the guy reaching for third. So Chargers now up. Only, only one. By one. As the guy that started off the inning, William Walter, back up to the plate. Two outs now. As both hitter and pitcher step out. Kim got away from the home plate that last play. I think they would have had him at home if he would have stayed next to the plate. I think so, too. Get down, reach. Here we go. So we're going to be playing here. We're going to be playing seven here at Stevenson Field unless the Chargers can stop the bleeding and then get a couple runs on their own. And by couple, I mean seven. So Charger two, fans are starting to come alive. They've been a little antsy yeah, lately. It's Charger or Cyclones, as there's quite a good mixture of both. So after two late swings from Walter, the count's one and two. Look for something out of the zone. Take some pine meat. Okay, Chargers give up six, but still hold the lead going to the bottom of the six.
So not the kind of inning that the Chargers wanted with the possibility of coming back to the plate in the bottom of the six with a chance to end the game. But they stopped the bleeding before the Cyclones could get even. Coach Draper does not look like a happy camper right now. <clears throat> Dawson Evans will come to the plate. He's two for three today with three RBI. <coughs> Rowan's one for two after two sack opportunities. So, William Walter will exit after pinch hitting. Looks like Chandler Shepard's gonna, in the lineup now, taking G's place in the batting lineup. Dawson Evans, as we said, will come back to the plate as Colin Morse stays on the mound. This is the second time that Evans has seen <coughs> Morris. He didn't get to complete his at bat as Fisher was thrown out at the plate on a wild pitch, which would have ended the game, but instead, the Cyclones score six on the top of the six, and the Chargers will bat. And the score is now 11 to 10. Dawson drops down a pretty good drag bunt, which stays fair, great. and there's no play. Great, great bunt. bunt. Great bunt. Great idea, great bunt. No opportunity for the third baseman to have a chance at it. Good idea. Get Morris out of the windup, which he was deadly in in the first, at, first inning that he pitched in. And now the hot Roman fan soccer will come back up to the plate. Good chance we might see another bunt here to move him over. Dawson, the free safety and wide receiver on the football field. Good legs. He takes a fair lead at first. No bunt here, but it's a wild pitch. Goes back to the, the backstop. So Dawson takes second base easily. Morse had quite a few wild pitches in his inning of work. Chargers have tried to capitalize, unfortunately being thrown out at home in one of them. So we'll step back on the rubber. 1-0 count with Dawson out at second base after the leadoff single on the drag bunt. Roman will square around a bunt, but he doesn't like the pitch as it goes outside for ball two. Coach Draper giving signs again to Roman as both the second and shortstop are deking Dawson at second base, trying to keep him honest. They both clear, but Morris attempts a move at second base to move Dawson back. Second base and shortstop are going again. There is a bunt, but it's fouled into the stands and into our press box. Didn't look like he got quite squared away there, just kind of hitting our main man, Irfan, controlling the music up there. Chuck Shepard on deck. So 2 1 count now. And Roman is square around the bunt again. But it's a slash play as he's popped it up in the infield. Second baseman's under it, and that's the first out of the inning. So the Chargers tried a little slash play to get the defense shifting and then try to find a hole with a swing. But Roman got underneath it. And now we're seeing Chandler Shepard for the first time up at bat. These guys need to drive it to right field. Chandler's a 5'10", 150-pound freshman. He's going to bunt, and it's going to go straight back to the pitcher. Play at third, but he's safe. <coughs> so Chandler does his job, but not as effectively as Coach wanted, but Dawson was too quick to beat, to beat the throw from Colin Morris. Good chance to see you. Fielder's choice there. Excuse me, Coop. Good chance to see a delayed steal here and get the runner from third moving towards home. Or I think that's a very real possibility. 
So Blake Adams, the freshman, DHing for the first base from Joe Wheeler up to the plate. Pickoff attempt, but no throw from Morris. Short lead has not been picked off at first. Moore steps off again. He took a stretch and the batter wasn't in the box. Another bunt attempt. This one's fouled back. Almost dive attempt there from Lucas behind the plate, but he doesn't get there in time. So 0 1 count now, one out. Third baseman, Dylan Rhodes creeping in as another wild pitch. This one is going to score Dawson Evans. Another good throw and catch from Lucas to Morris. It's pretty coach play there. Well, that's two in a row. That Dawson, the hes Dawson hesitated there, but the, the head first slide was good enough to play down. So 12-10 now as... Chuck Shepard moves all the way from first to third. Well, those last two wild pitches to the backstop, the catchers got back there quick and throwing a strike to the pitcher covered home. I didn't think there was a chance they were going to make that play, but it, like you said, Lucas made another good play behind the play as they're having a conversation, Lucas and Morris on the mound. Couldn't have had a better guy at third with the speed of Dawson. Infield's in for Cassidy, it looks like. <coughs> Adams wasn't ready for the off-speed pitch there because he Morris to hasn't thrown one. many. It's a 2-2 two -two count. <coughs> Drape likes to have him bat with two strikes. Oh, so Draper, Adams, you're correct. Draper does like to have him bunt with two strikes. Charger fans thought that Blake Adams pulled it back, but the infield umpire says he offered at it. So he's down on strikes. That leads us to the top of the order with two outs. And Campbell rips one to left field. Over the over the head of left fielder Gray Cadigan. That'll plate Chandler Shepard. And a double. He's going to stretch into a triple as the shortstop tries to cut it off, but it's not in time as Campbell Kerr rips a triple to left field. RBI triples. We've seen a lot of triples today, folks. Is that the fourth or the fifth? Two, three. It's the We've had at least. at least fourth. Probably not smart by the shortstop to cut it off there is that slowed down the track of the ball from left fielder. Pretty good throw in from Gray Cadigan. Scoreboard wrong, 13-10, I believe. Pretty good block there from Lucas. 13-10, Chargers lead. Couple insurance runs heading into the top. Jack Blumenthal rips one of the shortstop, and he bobbles it. Throw's not going to be able to be bade. So that puts another run, so Chargers are leading 14-10. Top of the order coming through again. 18 hits now for the Chargers. Morris is... Morse is trying to pick off a lot at first base, not even coming to a set. Now the catcher, Lucas, is getting in the action, trying to pick back on Blumenthal. Foul back.
Strike one, so one, one count. Another pickoff attempt to first base. Chargers got some insurance here. Foul ball into the street over the first baseline. We're running on three hours yet? Just over two. <laughs> the older guys know how to take one in the inside. The younger guys still bailing Jack out. Jack Blumenthal was running, but won't matter as Fisher got hit on the inside knee. So cleanup hitter. <coughs> Cleanup hitter Bernie Zell come to the plate with two outs. So after Cassie scored six in the top of the six, the Chargers have plated three and now lead 14 10. Chargers can keep this going and plate four more. The game will be over without going to the seventh inning. There's two outs here. Another pitch low and in the dirt. This time Lucas blocks it. So Morris takes a stretch. Pretty good cut there. 2-1 count now. That was a hitter's count right there. Brennan got the pitch he wanted, just done a little bit underneath it, though. Ball low and outside. It's so a 3-1 count, another hitter's count for Beasel. He'll get a chance here to ride it. That was a pretty good pitch to hit and drive, and he wanted it. So he fouls it off over the first base dugout and into the street again. 3-2 so count with two outs. See what Beasel can do with the payoff pitch. Pickoff attempt here with no one covering second base. Blumenthal retre retreats a couple feet, but not all the way back. Dugout giving the pitch a little hard time. Other foul balls, runners were on the move there at the 3 2 2 count. Catcher shows his, or excuse me, the umpire shows his athletic ability with a I can't catch it move. <laughs> so runners will be moving again on 3 2 count on the pitch. Beasel's been very close on all these foul balls. For him to drive one here. Morris blows one by him, though, <coughs> to end the sixth inning. Chargers lead 14 10. We'll be right back with the top of the seventh action right after this break. When you walk into Fuzzy's Taco Shop, you'll know you're in the right place. With the best Baja style menu in town, we'll have the whole family addicted. Nachos, tacos, burritos, it doesn't matter. It's like an explosion of flavor in your mouth. We know you've had a long day, and you deserve a break. So, bring the crew to one of the Fuzzy's Taco Shop locations in Norman, Oklahoma City, or Stillwater. Welcome to your new addiction. This game is brought to you by Fuzzy's Taco Shop, Texadelphia Social Grill, Energy FC Soccer, 
Mercedes-Benz of Oklahoma City, 77 Energy, and Spartan College. Welcome back to the top of the seventh here at Stevenson Field, Stadium 11, for hopefully the last inning of the Penn Street rivalry. Too, I thought. We get the seven hole hitter here, Matt McClintock. Charger coach is just looking for strikes. Throw strikes, let your defense play. Strike two. Beasel's really gotten in the groove of it now. He's pumping gas here. High fastball. Out of the zone, one two count. Take some pine meat. <laughs> That's number first eight out of the least. First out at the top of the seventh. I got to tell you, Coop, that's my favorite line. <laughs> Take some pine meat. Shout out to some of the Charger listeners. Uh, Mimi Cloud, I'd like to say <laughs> hi to her. Merv Johnson here on the color. It sounds like the call button. Strike one, pumping his own diesel is. I can hear it. Strike two, one two count. Take some pine meat. Take some pine meat. Second out of the inning. Second strike out of the inning for Beasel. So now we've got the nine hole hitter, Gray Cadigan. Left fielder. Strike one. Beasel's in a serious zone right now after striking out. Charger coach is breathing a sigh of relief. <laughs> Off-speed pitch low. Beasel wants to check at first base, but they won't get it. 1-1 one, one count. Beasel gets in the windup. <coughs> Pump with his own fastballs. I'm going to go One, out on a limb, count. Coop. I'm going to say take some pine meat. Here we go. Finish it off. Let's cross our fingers. Beasel doesn't like the first two signs, but he does it the third. 2-2 oh. two, two count, two outs. So get your twos ready, Charger fans. As that pitch sailed outside for a ball. And there it take is. Take some pine meat. <laughs> Chargers take the <laughs> Penn Street rivalry 14 10. Chargers, pretty high scoring game there 14 10, 19 hits for the Chargers and nine runs. Or nine hits, excuse me, for Casty. Kind of got a little tight for a little bit for yeah. the Chargers. Opened it back up again. I think they were just kind of toying with them. But it was a good victory for the Chargers leading into the big series they got or the doubleheader they've got on Thursday. So as the Chargers and the Cyclones shake hands, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back after Coach Draper has a word with the Chargers, we're going to be joined with our player of the game. So we're going to take a quick commercial break and then join us back very shortly. We don't just certify our pre-owned vehicles. We inspect, analyze, and recondition each one until it's nothing short of a genuine certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz for the next new owner. Available only at your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. Visit today for exceptional offers.
This game is brought to you by Fuzzy's Taco Shop, Texadelphia Social Grill, Energy FC Soccer, Mercedes-Benz of Oklahoma City, 77 Energy, and Spartan College. So welcome back here. Stadium 11, Stevenson Field. Cooper Cloud joined for this very last portion as we have been the whole game by Mark Adams. And Mark, keys to the game for the Chargers where they wanted to attack and put pressure on Cassidy and keep playing flawless defense and keep the foot on the gas. They didn't keep the foot on the gas, but they did uh, attack and put pressure on the Cassidy defense, and they played pretty good defense. Um, what hurt them was they gave up a couple hits that led to six runs in the top of the six when they could have ended the game, but they had consistent scoring as they scored in every inning but the bottom of the fifth. You know, they've had a good tendency this year to get ahead early, and it kind of takes a little bit of the pressure off the pitching, so if it does falter a little bit, they, they've got time to regroup and got a big enough lead that it easily doesn't bother them. So they're a veteran ball club. They play from behind. They play ahead, and just uh, just a good win for them tonight, especially against their rival. Chargers only played the Cyclones one time this year. His first meeting against the Cyclones was vacated by the Cyclones as they were not prepared to play. Um, they only had one practice on the season, so they decided they weren't ready to play us. Um, but good to get the win under the belt as the Chargers haven't lost to Cyclones in any sport, it seems like, in quite forever, a few years. Forever. It's just been, it's been a good run for us, and most likely we'll keep it going. It looks like the uh, Cyclone fans over there are gathered to – Moral victory. They're pretty excited, and that's uh, kind of typical the way the series has been going lately. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll hopefully see some of those Cyclone fans back here at Heritage Hall in September when we revamp the Polo Bowl series. Uh, going to be interesting little dynamic for Casty as they uh, are now going to be one of the lone team in the SBC as Holland Hall is going to be switching to the OSSA in the 16-17 Scholastic school year, but are making the switch. Uh, this year for district purposing football. Um, so it'll be a different little atmosphere over there at Cassidy as most as every one of their games are going to be either at Cassidy or in the Dallas or Houston area. And that could impact the Chargers some. You know, the Chargers in football, they scrimmage against Hall & Hall, who recently just joined the OSSA for the 2016 year, and so they may have to change that. Who knows? Kind of maybe have a couple drives to Tulsa that we aren't used to. That's a good possibility. And also, too, on the other hand, the Chargers in football, too, you know, with the recent success, or I shouldn't say recent. Continued uh, sustained. Continued su sustained success. Uh, the Chargers could be moving up to Class 4A. Pretty soon. <laughs> well, Coop, are you going to be out Thursday to watch the games, doubleheader? Or? I don't know if I – we play here on Thursday? Play here on th Thursday, I believe. Then I'll be here on the PA, and then on Friday I think I'll be back on Charger Vision. And then Saturday I'll definitely be here to uh, showcase my home run swing and uh, hopefully whoop up on some JV and varsity players as the Chargers are are uh, concluding their um, team meeting. And we're going to sign you off, Mark, so we can make way for Campbell. So appreciate you joining us tonight and hopefully see you in the future. Absolutely. I want to thank you for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure working with you, Coop. Uh, see you soon. And uh, – Good day. <laughs> Good day, Mark. Okay, we're being joined now by Campbell Kerr. Still got his gear on. Charlie Hustle, as we called him. Hey, Campbell. Man. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> well, it's good to see your smiling face. Campbell, you were two for five today with two triples, and you are a Charger player of the game. What did you? Uh, what was the feeling like coming into the game that, that Coach Draper wanted to instill in you all with the rivalry game? Well, you know, no Heritage Hall team has lost to Cassidy this year. We certainly didn't want to be. I don't think it's just this year. I think it's been about five. It probably has been about five, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we lost to Cassidy my freshman year, and it was a bad taste, and we certainly don't want to do it again at any Good. level. Well, um, you being the leadoff hitter, getting the two triples and setting the table for the heart of the lineup, what's the importance of, of getting on base and being uh, a run producing at the top of the lineup? Well, you know, we got to have base runners. I mean, there are two, three, and four excellent hitters, and I have faith in them. If I get on base, I'm going to score. You Tonight you played quite a few positions. What is it like to switch around defense and have to – play with three different gloves tonight in three different positions. <laughs> oh, well, I, I absolutely love it. It adds a new element to the game and, you know, makes it a lot more fun. Good for you. Well, Campbell, I appreciate the time. Appreciate it. Congratulations Cooper. tonight. Thank you. And good luck the rest of the way. All right, that's uh, that's it for us here in uh, Stevenson Field in Stadium 11, and uh, we'll be back on the air in, for the baseball team this Friday, and we'll hope to have you uh, join us. So 
Signing off for one last time, Cooper Cloud, thank you for joining us.